Is that our banter? Is that our banter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to have opening banter when you're saying, hey, let's have opening banter. Yeah. Because <laughs> we've been talking for like, how long now? Like 15 yeah. minutes. No, I think we've been talking for 30 minutes. almost 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Adam Harrison, Riley Carrasquillo, and the web of tomorrow. There we go. The web of tomorrow. So today, what we're going to talk about is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, frameworks, and libraries. Which is something that kind of confused me at the beginning. Because when people told me that they're going to be using Angular, I was like, well, I thought you used JavaScript. Right. But it is JavaScript. <laughs> um, and these are your main tools as a front-end web developer. Yeah, or languages almost, if you will. Like JavaScript's definitely a language. HTML and CSS are kind of languages. Yeah, they're languages, but they're not necessarily programming. Yeah. Straight up. They're coding. You know, they're throw you're throwing in code, there's a systematic. We're going to talk about that. All right, so what is HTML exactly? HTML is, so the thing that helped me really understand it was this idea of a view. And the view is ultimately what you see. So if you start typing just randomly into your HTML document, and again, that's if you put index.html in as your file name, then you have made an HTML document. Once you've done that, you throw in some text in there, you will see it on a web page, for example, and it will look really boring, uh, it won't really look like anything other than what you've just typed, but it will be there. Mm -hmm. And that's what you see, ultimately. There's like a certain structure right. for it, like you say, here's, here's an image, and here's a paragraph, and here's a table, and here's a sidebar, and here's a header, and here's a footer, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I kind of think of it as the structure of the page. Yeah. What is What does the page look like? How's it laid out? Um, not how's it laid out, but what is the content? Yeah, and you'll see the influence of HTML and a lot of other website type aids or blog aids like WordPress and Squarespace. You'll say you'll see if you put like an H1 header or mark something as an H2 header or H3 header, that comes from HTML, from that structure of HTML. And it actually is being structured in HTML that way when you, when you manipulate those things. So that's for those of you that have actually played with blogs like that. Also, Google uh, Drive and Google Docs has that as well. And it's, it's actually a way for you to create an automatic uh, index for your page. You're Which, talking about building a website with, with Google something? No, they just, it's when you, when you if you throw in like a, with doc stuff, uh, you can do like H1, uh, hmm. H2, H3 type stuff. Uh, I haven't seen it that. It has a different use case, um, but that's kind of where it comes from. It's, it's all that, that same lingo, and it's all about structure. And okay. you're right, HTML is where you get your, your structure of your page. And then there's CSS. Uh, and do you want to go into that, actually? Yeah, so CSS is more like the presentation of your content. It's CSS says how your HTML should look on the page. Yeah, and CSS is the easiest thing to use. Everyone loves it, and... Well, <laughs> yeah. Because there's, there's a lot of jokes about CSS, yeah. but, I mean, honestly, my wife loves CSS. Yeah, it's fun. I like it, too, actually. Not a lot of people do, but... But I, yeah, there's this really great picture where it's got a box, and inside the box it says CSS is awesome, but the awesome is sticking out past the box. Yeah. And it's just making fun of how, like, how sometimes it's difficult to keep your text within a certain bounds or, and stuff like that. Right. The cool thing about CSS is that um, it provided the power to HTML to or like to a website to actually look cool or look fantastic actually like 
provide that actual aesthetic pleasing. So the user friendliness type stuff that we see today uh, started with CSS. Yeah, yeah. Without CSS, every web page would look the same. It'd be white background, black text, blue links underlined, and that would be it. Yep, that would be it. And there's different ways that you can apply CSS to an HTML document. The most common way is that you will actually link it within the HTML document. Now you can actually, as well, uh, do CSS within H an HTML document. Yeah. Um, but the most common way is to have your own separate file that you then, in turn, manipulate and do things to the HTML, um, in, but you do it in that CSS document. And then you do that, and typically what you'll see, a common name for it will be styles dot or style dot CSS, and then you have a CSS document. Yep, yep. And you can have multiple CSS documents. You might include CSS from something like Bootstrap, and then it includes your own CSS as well. But yeah, just know that Bootstrap is uh, a pretty cool tool that came out of CSS and came out of the need for some quick, you know, little plugins to throw things in there fast yeah. um, so that you don't have to do it yourself. And then the big kahuna, JavaScript. Yeah, so JavaScript is the one out of the three things that's actually a real programming language. Yeah. Like you can actually, so HTML is the structure, CSS is how it looks, and then JavaScript is kind of how it acts. So it, JavaScript can do all sorts of stuff on the page. It can submit forms. It can um, put messages on the page. It can completely completely change the content of the page or change the, it can even change the CSS of the page. And this is where it gets the most complicated. CSS is where it gets very frustrating off, often just because you have to do a lot of work to make sure it looks exactly like you, you want to. You use CSS to position things, to put color in there, you use it to provide style. But JavaScript is where you're going to need your critical thinking, your mathematical thinking skills. Not, not that you necessarily need to be like a math genius or even be good at math, it's just that's where you're going to actually need to be able to apply a lot of creativity and, uh, and a lot of understanding as well. That's where the most learning will come into play. It's yeah. JavaScript. Yeah. And JavaScript has a lot of aspects to it. And we'll, we're going to dive in a little bit into that. Uh, those are called frameworks and libraries. But I kind of wanted to talk about where JavaScript came from. So we're going to get an awesome history lesson from Adam Harris, our yeah. resident history buff of JavaScript, right? You're like, you just love the history of I've heard a little bit about the history. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no, tell us, but yeah, tell us a little bit of where JavaScript came from. So it was uh, invented at uh, Netscape Navigator, basically, and the guy who invented it, Brandon Ike, he he basically invented it in about like a week or something. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but he was that. like, yeah, I think he was like a real guru of programming languages. So he took ideas from different languages. And uh, they just wanted something that was really easy for beginners. They, they, they could do a few simple things on, on web pages. And one of the original names that they gave it, I think it went through several names, was LiveScript. And uh, then they really wanted to kind of market it as a little brother of this other programming language, Java. And so they had this, like, this agreement that they would call it JavaScript, even though it has nothing to do with Java, but it's just like this marketing marketing ploy because Java was really popular. And Java, it, you could run Java in the browser at the time. Well, I don't know at the time, but th you could run Java in the browser and you still can maybe, but they're phasing that out. Anyway. For the most part, most languages aren't interchangeable and they have very different use cases. JavaScript was built for front-end web development, right? Yeah. For mostly. Yeah. Back-end web development, there are actually several languages that you could you could play around with and toy with. And if you're more interested in back-end development, then I would recommend that you go in search of those languages. Uh, that's not what we're going to talk about here. We're going to be talking about a lot about JavaScript and JavaScript ideas and um, 
the more front end web development stuff. Uh, that's mostly where our experience comes from. So just remember, Java is not the same as JavaScript. Yeah. JavaScript is not an offshoot of Java, like some other languages might have developed in some way. You know, this is, they're completely different, and JavaScript over the years has seen a ton of development and is still seeing a ton of development. I think we just came out with ECMA, what is it called, ECMA 6, which is so, like the Yeah, updates. Yeah, whenever JavaScript got standardized, they went to this organization called ECMA, European something, something, something. So they call the language ECMAScript. That's it, like its official name. JavaScript's official name is ECMAScript. And so, yeah, ECMAScript version 6. Actually... It was called ES6. Now they've actually said we're going to call it e, uh, ES2015. Oh. So if you see ES6 or ES2015, that's the same thing. Hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then they're going to start coming out with versions a lot faster than they have in the past. So the next one's going to be ES2016 and then ES2017. And that basically means that it's no different from any other update that you might see, like an update of an OS yeah. Uh, or an update of your iPhone, or an update of your favorite app, or a video game, or yeah. something like that. It's the same thing. They just add content to make it better. But they're being really smart about it so that they they can't break the web. Like, they're not going to do something that will break every web page in history. Yeah. <laughs> so they're being really that. smart about it and, <laughs> and adding features in a way that doesn't break existing sites. Could you imagine? It would be like, I, we need you to retrofit everything right now. Yeah. Because we just changed everything about JavaScript. That would be terrible. And yeah, we didn't really go into CSS a lot, but we will. I think we could even devote a whole podcast to it. But let's go ahead and go into what are frameworks and libraries. Because I think that was probably one of the most confusing and distracting things for me personally because I didn't understand them. Yeah. I think the the line between framework and library is kind of blurry. Yeah. And they get the words get used interchangeably, interchangeably a lot. So I'm not going to like put down a hard definition for the difference between those two. But basically basically a library is a bit of javascript that you include that someone else wrote, you include it on your on your site and it helps you do something easier. For me, a really good example is Angular, which is a fairly popular framework, but it's really widely used here in Utah as well, among a lot of different companies and startups. Uh, so Angular is a framework that was created by Google yeah. uh, for the purpose of de developing and creating web apps. And basically, it makes uh, the process of creating a web app or a an application that you use in the web, because <laughs> yeah. not a lot of people may know a lot about what, what an app web app specifically is, but it's the service that you provide specifically on the web or through the, through the medium of the web. And Angular makes that easier to do. Yeah, and before Angular, I'd heard of a bunch of these types of things like Backbone, Ember, Knockout, and, and Angular, of course. And Angular's gotten really popular. Yeah, and then the new hot child uh, coming out right now is React. React, from, yeah. uh, wait, from Facebook. From Facebook, yeah. And then another really popular one that's front-end and back-end all at the same time using JavaScript is Meteor. Oh, I haven't even heard of Meteor. Yeah, Meteor is pretty cool. Is it? It's all very real-time, and uh, you, you, you write your front-end and back-end and d database stuff all in Interesting, the same cool. Code. Actually, you know what? I, ha I think I have heard of that just a little bit I think I was I think I remember seeing like a tweet about it I like I need to jump into this thing huh there's like a new one every week I know it feels like there's so <laughs> stinking many and we haven't even touched on libraries yet which are uh, technically different than frame frameworks. yeah a, a framework different... I would say like a framework is more overarching for your whole application yeah whereas a framework might just do a little thing here or there you mean a library sorry library yeah some of the popular libraries are jQuery. Yeah, jQuery. That's got to be the biggest. Yeah. <laughs> jQuery just basically helps you manipulate your web page. Yeah, and make it look nicer or do certain things yeah. quicker and better. If you ask a question on Stack Overflow, a lot of times the answer will be written in jQuery. Yeah. <laughs> 
But here's the biggest takeaway from this. Uh, these, so frameworks and libraries are made or have been developed for the purpose of helping us do things quicker and you know, mostly efficient and faster in JavaScript. But that doesn't mean that you have to go out and learn all of these things. If you learn the concepts of learning, really, just general learning, then you will be able to pick up these things fairly quickly. Yeah. And I don't mean like you're going to have it in... I mean, I remember when Angular came out, uh, there was this big hoopla about how difficult it was to understand. And now it seems like mo a lot of companies are just kind of picking it up. And that took a while to figure out for most people. But now there's just so many resources that help you, a lot of documentation. So you're not alone out there, for the most part. You may be alone out there a little bit, but you're not completely alone. <laughs> the best thing to do is find a programming mentor. Someone that you know that is pretty good at uh, programming. Don't, they don't even have to be amazing. Uh, but someone who has been doing it for maybe a few years and just go out and ask questions. I feel like the programming world is really good about helping new people. All right, I hope that was helpful, just talking about the basics of what HTML and CSS and JavaScript is and you know, kind of what's a, a library and, and a framework. And soon here, we're going to talk about CMS is. Yeah, content management systems. For us, in just a, in, in about two minutes, we're going to talk about CMSs. Uh, for you guys, you get to hear it on Thursday. So look forward to that. <laughs>